Hey everyone, it's our day. Friday, Friday, Friday. We love Friday, Friday. Friday is the best day. Friday, Friday, Friday. It is Friday, May 1st. We have gone into a new month and it is the month of May. So, let's go with our board. You see, I cleaned it off because if today is the beginning of May, then it is May number one. Twenty. Twenty. And we all know how to write the number one. It's a straight line. It's lots of fun. That's the way to make a one. Try it and see if you can do it. I know my guys can, but if there's other people out there, please try it. And we know one. That's all. Just one. So, Friday, May 1st, and I'm very proud of myself today because I've learned to do something this morning. I'm trying to get my lights so you can actually see me um, without a whole lot of glare. Um, I figured out how to do something today, which I'm going to send in an email to your mommies and daddies after I finish this. Now, before we get started, we have been very remiss. That means we haven't done it with our words. So let's work on our words. Then I have two stories for you. Ready? Tuesday, Monday, Thursday, using that TH sound, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday, Friday, 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 we love Friday, Friday, Friday is the best day, Friday, Friday, Friday. Okay, have to do it. You know me, have to do it. Be silly. Red, pink, black, white, blue, yellow, gray, purple, brown, green, orange, do, D-O, do. I just had a helper come in the room. Annie's here. Can, C-A-N, can. Will, W-I-L-L, -L, will. C, S-E-E-C, -E -E the, T-H-E, the. Look, L-O-O-K, look. Mine, M-I-N-E, mine. My, M-Y, my. Me, M-E, me. Is, I-S, is, today. T-O-D-Y. I'm going to sneeze today. Maybe I'm going to sneeze. Maybe not. Nope, I'm going to. Ready? One, two, three. <gasps> mm. Allergies. Don't like them. Both Annie and I are sneezing today. You. Y-O-U-U. -U. There. T-H-E-R-E. -E. There. I. In. I-N-N. -N. We. W-E. We. Am. A-M, am. Have. H-A-V-E, have. What? W-H-A-T, what? Like. L-I-K-E, like. And. A-N-D, and. Said. S-A-I-D, said. And with. W-I-T-H, with. Very good. All right. Well, I want you to know that yesterday uh, I used the Walter the Baker book and got online and got one of my recipes and I made some wonderful cinnamon rolls. They were really good. We had them for dessert last night. In the meantime, I want to show you a couple of things. My celery. Look at those roots, guys. You see, they're getting the little hairs on them. It's too cold to plant it outside still, so it's still with me. My lettuce is growing leaves. I don't know if you can see that real well. There you go. You can see some leaves growing there. 
And my carrot's still being a carrot. You can see that there. It's still just being a carrot. But look what's happening to my potato! Oh, let me see. It's kind of slimy. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see those little white things sticking out? Those little hairy things? Roots! Yay! I'm successful. So that's two exciting things. Now, two stories today, so I want to get right into it. The first, well, they both have three things here for you. They both, both books, include these things. Do you know what these things are? What is that thing? And that thing. And last of all, this thing. If you're guessing rocks, you're right. I went out in my garden and I picked them up and you can see how dirty they are. I didn't wipe them off. Our books are about rocks today. Actually, stones. Which is just another name for rock, right? So, um, Miss Patty has a daughter-in-law, Liz, who lives with my grandson, Beezer, and she has, she does cooking. She's a great cook, oh, my goodness. And she likes to cook things, and she's been sharing some videos, just like I share videos with you, about cooking. So she has asked her friends, what do you want me to make so that you can cook along with me? So I suggested to her from an old book, that I remember from when I was a little girl. And that book is called Stone Soup. Now, I have two stories. Stone Soup, Stone Soup. This particular one <clears throat> I borrowed from a friend of my mind. Thank you, Miss, or a friend of mine. Thank you, Mrs. Green. Um, she is a teacher friend of mine, and I had both of her kids in kindergarten. And I put out a video, and or I put out a request, does anybody have the book Stone Soup? And so she very kindly loaned me her copy of Stone Soup. This is not the copy that I remember from a little girl. So I thought, well, I'm going to read this book and see what it's all about. And it's a little different from my copy, and you'll see that when I finish this one and go to the next one. This book is about stones, one, two, three of them, and sharing. We all know how to do that. Empty soup bowl, stones, stone soup. Three monks, Hawk, Locke, and Sue, traveled along a mountain road. They talked about cat whiskers, the color of the sun, and giving. What make, makes one happy, Sue, asked Hawk, the littlest monk, or the youngest monk. Old Sue, who was the wisest, said, well, let's find out. So here they are walking along. Now, these paintings are way different from the ones that Eric Carl does. This looks like watercolors, which tend to me to be a little more mm, dreamy colored, sort of smoky almost. So the pictures might be hard to see. So I'm going to read first and then I'm going to show you. The sound of a bell brought their gaze to the rooftops of the village below. They could not see from so high above that the village had been through many hard times. Famine, that means no food, flood and war had made the villagers wary and untrusting of strangers. They had even become suspicious of their neighbors. Uh-oh. That means they didn't trust them. So there is that sort of watery colored village. You can see the rooftops there. And here are the monks way up here on the mountain. The villagers worked hard, but only for themselves. There was a farmer tea merchant, somebody who sold tea, a scholar, that means somebody who's very smart and learned, 
a seamstress, somebody who sews, a doctor, a carpenter, somebody who builds with wood, and many others, but they had little to do with one another. Now when the monks reached for the foot of the mountain, the villagers disappeared into their houses. No one came to the gates to greet them, and when the people saw them enter the village, they closed their windows tight. They didn't trust these three people. And monks are kind of like priests, so the or ministers. The monks knocked on the door of the first house, but there was no answer. Then the house went dark. They knocked on the second door, and the same thing happened. It happened again and again from house to house. Nobody answered the door. These people do, do not know happiness, they all agreed. But today, said Sue, his face bright as the moon, we will show them how to make stone soup. Have you ever had stone soup? I certainly haven't. They gathered twigs and branches and made a fire. They placed a small tin pot on top and filled it with water from the village well. Now, you and I would just go to the stove and put a pot on and fill it with water from the faucet, but this is a long time ago. A brave little girl who had been watching came to them. What are you doing, she asked. We're gathering twigs, said Locke. We are making a fire, said Hawk, and we are making stone soup, and we need three round, smooth stones, said Sue. Now, you'll notice here I only have one round, smooth stone. The other two are kind of jagged. One's gray in color, dark gray, and the other one's kind of white. And it's okay. You can use any kind of stone. Now, the little girl helped the monks look around the courtyard until they found just the right ones, and then they put them in the water to cook. One, two, three. It almost looks like a stone snowman, doesn't it? And then this is the shadow right here. These stones will make excellent soup, said Sue, but this very small pot won't make much, I'm afraid. Oh, my mother has a bigger pot, said the little girl. The little girl ran home, and as she started to take a pot, her mother asked her what she was doing. The three strangers are making soup from stones, she said. They need our biggest pot. This is a pretty big pot. Hmm, said the girl's mother. Stones are easy to come by. I'd like to learn how to do that. The monks poked the coals, and as smoke drifted up, the neighbors peered out from their windows. The fire in the large pot in the middle of the village was a true curiosity. Everyone wanted to know what's going on. One by one, the people of the village came out to see just what this stone soup was. Of course, old style stone soup should be well seasoned with salt and pepper. Well, that makes sense to me. I put salt and pepper in, sh in soup. Well, that is true, said Locke as he stirred the giant pot filled with water and stones. But we have none. Oh, I have some salt and pepper, said the scholar, his eyes big with curiosity. He disappeared and came back with salt and pepper and even a few other spices. Elizabeth, now might be the time to get the sage out. Sue took a taste. The last time we had soup stones of this size and color, carrots made the broth very sweet. Carrots, said a woman from the back. I may have a few carrots, but just a few. And off she ran. She returned with as many carrots as she could carry and dropped them into the pot. Well, that makes sense. I put carrots in soup. Do you think we, it would be better with onions, asked Hawk? Oh, yes, maybe an onion would taste good, said a farmer, and he hurried off. He returned in a moment with five five big onions and he dropped them into the bubbling soup. You can see one, two, three of them there. I think the other ones already went ker plunk. 
Now that's a fine soup, he said, and the villagers all nodded their heads, as the smell was very agreeable. But if only we had some mushrooms, said Sue, rubbing his chin. Several villagers licked their lips. A few dashed away and returned with fresh mushrooms, noodles, pea pods, and even cabbages. You can see the mushrooms and the pea pods. Now, this is all the villagers looking into the pot. So this is taken like the camera is in the pot, looking up. Something magical began to happen among the villagers. As each person opened their heart to give, the next person gave even more. And as this happened, the soup grew richer and smelled more delicious. I imagine the emperor would suggest we add dumplings, said one villager. And bean curd, said another. What about a cloud ear and mung beans and yams, cried some others, and taro root and winter melon and baby corn, cried the villagers. Garlic, ginger root, soy sauce, lily buds. I have some, I have some, people cried out, and off they ran, returning with all they could carry. The monks stirred and the pot bubbled. How good it smelled, how good it would taste, giving the villagers, or how giving the villagers had become. As the soup was ready, the villagers gathered together. They brought rice and steamed buns. They brought lychee nuts and sweet cakes. They brought tea to drink, and they lit lanterns. Everyone sat down to eat. They had not been together for a feast like this as long as anyone could remember. After the banquet, they told stories, sang songs, and celebrated long into the night. Looks like quite a party. Not like the kind of parties that we have. Well, somewhat. Music and lanterns. Then they unlocked their doors and took the monks into their homes and gave them comfortable places to sleep. In the gentle spring morning, Everyone gathered together near the willows to say farewell. Thank you for having us as your guests, said the monks. You've been most generous. Thank you, said the villagers, with the gifts you have given. We will always have plenty. You have shown us that sharing makes us all richer. And to think, said the monks, to be happy is as simple as making stone soup. And that's the end. All right. So, did you learn something there? The monks kind of tricked the villagers and added the makings for soup. Now, this is the book that I remember, Stone Soup. And this one is by Anne McGovern, and the pictures are by Winslow Penny Pels. That's kind of a funny name. This one was by John J. Muth, M-U-T-H, Muth. So this is the one that I remember which I ordered from Amazon, and it came in one day. That was pretty cool. Stone soup. A little bit different. A young man was walking. He walked and he walked. He walked all night and he walked all day. He was tired. And he was hungry. I surely would be too if I walked all night and all day. At last he came to a big house. What a fine house, he said. There will be plenty of food for me. And he knocked on the door. That's called, by the way, a thatch roof. It's made out of grass. A little old lady opened it. Good lady, said the young man. I am very hungry. Can you give me something to eat? I have nothing to give you, said the lady. I have nothing in the house. I have nothing in the garden. And she began to close the door. Stop, said the young man. If you will not give me something to eat, will you give me a stone? A stone, 
said the little old lady. What will you do with a stone? You cannot eat a stone. No, you kind of can't. Ah, said the young man. I can make soup from a stone. Now the little old lady had never heard of that. Make soup from a stone. Fancy that. There are stones in the road, said the little old lady. The young man picked up a round gray stone. Well, this stone, he said, will make a wonderful soup, he said. Now get me a pot. See the stone he's got there? The little old lady got a pot. Fill the pot with water and put it on the fire, said the young man. The little old lady did as she was told, and soon the water was bubbling in the pot. It's a pretty big pot, too. Not as big as the villager pot, but it didn't have to feed that many people. The young man put the round gray stone into the pot. Now we will wait for the stone to cook into soup, he said. The pot bubbled and bubbled. And after a while, the little old lady said, This soup is cooking fast. It is cooking fast now, said the hungry young man, but it would cook faster with some onions. So the little old lady went to the garden to get some onions. Into the pot went the yellow onions with the round gray stone Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled, and after a while, the little old lady said, This soup smells good. Oh, it smells good now, said the hungry young man, but it would smell better with some carrots. So the little old lady went to the garden and pulled up all the carrots she could carry. Into the pot went the long, thin carrots with the yellow onions and the round gray stone. That's a funny picture of her pulling up carrots. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. And after a while, the little old lady said, this soup tastes good. Oh, it tastes good now, said the hungry young man. But it would taste better with beef bones. Look what he's doing. He's balancing a carrot on his nose. I don't think I could do that. So the little old lady went to get some juicy beef bones. Looks like she had to fight the puppy dog for it. She's in the dog house. Into the pot went the juicy beef bones and the long thin carrots and the yellow onions and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled and after a while the little old lady said, This soup is fit for a prince. Oh, it is fit for a prince now, said the hungry young man, but it would be fit for a king with a bit of salt, or a handful of salt and a bit of pepper. So the little old lady got the salt and the pepper. Into the pot went the bit of pepper and the handful of salt with the juicy beef bones, the long thin carrots, the yellow onions, and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled, and after a while, the little old lady said, This soup is too thin. It is too thin now, said the hungry young man, but it would be nice and thick with some butter and barley. So the little old lady went to get butter and barley, and into the pot went the butter and barley with a bit of pepper, the handful of salt, the juicy beef bones, and the long thin carrots, and the yellow onions, and the round gray stone. Look, she had to churn the butter. We saw the butter churning in pancakes, pancakes. From a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. The pot bubbled and bubbled. Wow, she's got her hands full. After a while, the little old lady tasted the soup again. That is good soup, she said. Yes, said the hungry young man. This soup is fit for a king. Now we will eat it. Stop, said the little old lady. This
This soup is indeed fit for a king. Now will I, I will set a table fit for a king. So she took out her best tablecloth and her best dishes. What a great idea to have a little feast with really nice stuff. Maybe you could dress up and have a little feast too, like you're going to a restaurant, but it's just pretend at home. Then the little old lady and the hungry young man ate all the soup. The soup made with the butter and barley, the bit of pepper, the handful of salt, the juicy beef bones, and the long thin carrots, and the yellow onions, and the round gray stone. Soup from a stone, said the little old lady. Fancy that. Now I must be on my way, said the young man. He took the stone out of the pot and put it into his pocket. Why are you taking the stone, said the little old lady. Well, said the young man, the stone is not cooked enough. I will have to cook it some more tomorrow. And the young man said goodbye. He walked on down the road, and he walked and he walked. What a fine supper I will have tomorrow, he said to himself. Soup from a stone. Fancy that. So those are the two stories about soup from a stone. Um, did the stones really make the soup? No, not really. But when I suggested to my daughter-in-law, Liz, make stone soup, that means look in your cabinets, look in your pantry. Look for things that you can put in soup. Now, personally, I wouldn't put a stone in my soup unless it was really, really clean. Like, so the first thing I would do is wash, wash the soap or wash the rock stone with soap and water and I would also wash my hands and fill my pot. And then I would start to look for things like the people in the in the uh, two books did. I would look for things like carrots and celery. Um, onions, maybe some rice, potato, some macaroni, maybe a banana, some olives, maybe some pizza. Um, no, I wouldn't put all those things in a soup, but um, you can look in your cabinets and see what you have. Try some new spices. Um, garlic and oregano and basil and rosemary and sage and, oh, what else is there? Thyme. There are so many. Ginger. You can put in all kinds of different vegetables. Broccoli. I have even put apples in my soup. Apples and sweet potatoes. Oh, it makes a wonderful soup. So, this is what I'm going to send to your mommies and daddies. It's a paper that looks like this, and it's called Pantry ABC Scavenger Hunt. Now, you may not have a pantry at your house. You might just have cabinets. Um, I have a very small pantry, so I don't keep all of my stuff in it. I keep a lot of stuff downstairs on shelves in the basement. But this is <clears throat> a scavenger hunt that you can play with your family and you can look in your cabinets, your refrigerator, whatever, and see if you can find something that starts with every letter of the alphabet. Now, here's what you do. When you find something, say for instance, you put a mm, potato in, potato right here, you would color in the letter P. You might find some lettuce. Personally, I wouldn't put lettuce in my soup, but you found it, so you can color that letter in. You might find some goldfish in your cabinet. Well, that begins with g g g g, so go ahead and col color that g in. Whatever you find. You might want to print another one of these and take a walk outside and see what things you can find with each letter of the alphabet. Taking a crayon or a pencil or a pen or a marker and just coloring those letters in when you find them. So I will be sending that to you. In the meantime, it's the weekend. I am going to just clean up my house a little bit 
and then I'm going to take the girls for a walk because the sun is shining. So I will see you all on Monday. I hope you have a great weekend. Today is the first day of May, so hopefully the rain will stop pretty soon and the flowers will really be in bloom. It's almost time to do those veggies. I'll see you Monday.